and welcome to On Stage. I'm Donna Carger. Coming up on today's show... What is the verdict by the jury for the crime of assault in the first degree? We find the defendant guilty. From the Otisville Correctional Institution to the New York stage, we'll speak with Joe Asadorian about the bullpen, the one-man, 18-character play he created while serving time in prison. We switch gears now and turn to the bullpen. That's a multi-character solo show starring and written by a man named Joe Asadorian. The title refers to a holding cell where prisoners are kept as they wait to be arraigned or transferred. It's something Asadorian knows well since he recently spent 12 years in prison serving time for attempted murder. The play grew out of a theater workshop Asadorian took part in while in prison. The workshop was led by actor-director Richard Holer, who is at the helm of the production. Contributing correspondent Patrick Pacheco recently got the chance to chat with Asadorian about the bullpen and his unusual journey to the stage. I'm standing here with Paul Shoemaker, the man who has just posted bail from the defendant. Do you know Mr. Asadorian well? Uh. <laughs> How long have you known the defendant? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, would you rather not appear on camera? No, it's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> so would you mind turning back around and facing the camera? Hey, sure, no problem. Is the defendant innocent? Uh, Welcome, Joe, to On Stage, and congratulations on this protean and quicksilver performance in your play. Thank you, thank you very much. You obviously have a lot of affection for the characters you create in the bullpen. Is that reflective of the affection you hold for the real people that you may have based them on? Absolutely, for sure. Like, you know, I have, a, I have a lot of love for all these people and I think that, that that's why it's people see it the way they do. They don't see the stereotypes, they see them as real people because of the love that I have. The bullpen was created in, <clears throat> in this 14-hour burst of creativity, but I gather it was sort of percolating all the time that you were incarcerated. Well, I mean, I had the characters before <clears throat> I sat down to write the play. Um, these are guys that, you know, I guess I mimicked while I was there before I even knew I was going to write this play. But when I sat down to write it, I figured these are 18 of the most interesting people I met in this 12 year span, so I'm gonna put them all in this one situation and create a story around them. You ha you've always had a talent for mimicry. Mm -hmm. um, did you use that talent to entertain your fellow inmates? I don't know how that starts or why or what, but I've always done that since I'm a kid. You know, I've always mimicked other people. I'm not sure if that's something, you know, some people are born with. I mean, it's just something that just I just did on my own and I've always done it my whole life and so it's helped with this particular play. So when you were, take us behind bars if you will, and, and the idea, when you were in the prison yard and stuff like that, would you mimic these characters? Do they sort of come to life first perhaps in a, in a prison yard or uh, entertaining your fellow inmates? Yeah, I, I, I uh, prison is pretty segregated still. You know, I mean, most places you have, you know, the Dominican guys here, you got white guys here, you got, you know, the Italians here and the black guys here. People kind of like segregate themselves. But I was one of the few guys I would just run around with everybody and just go from here to there and just mimic the last people I was with to these guys and go to these guys and just make everybody laugh. So I was always welcome with any group. Was it, as often happens just in high school or in grammar school, is the funny kid in the class yeah. can always break through these barriers, these segregated barriers. Was that it? Was it people just found that you were funny and consequently were welcome in any of the groups? Yeah, especially in a, in a, in a place like that where there's not a lot of laughs. Uh, you know, I guess guys, they, you know, if there's a, somebody like that, they, they welcome them. And, you know, when, I, when it was time for me to go, they didn't want me to leave. They wanted me to stay <laughs> in prison with them. But, you know, I uh, had to respectfully and politely decline that. And, <laughs> <laughs> get on my way. Was this a survival mechanism for you? Was this how you sort of survived what you were facing? It's something I've always done. Mm -hmm. um, it probably helped with that, uh, but it's something that I just did not thinking about. I mean, it worked for su survival purposes. Every I got along with everybody, I guess, because of my personality, but it's not something I said, okay, I'm going to do this so these guys, you know, they stay off me, you know? It just so happened that, you know, that's what I did. In the course of, of your incarceration, it was 12 years, mm -hmm. um, were you constantly writing different plays along the way? And 
How did you, did you read them to yourself and sort of create them yourself, or did you ever involve other inmates in terms of helping you create these characters? Uh, well, as far as the writing goes, I learned how to write from a, a, a friend of mine that was there named Brendan Cochran. He, uh, we wrote a our first play together, which was uh, read at the Public Theater for their New Work Now uh, program that they do. After that, I just kept writing. I never stopped. And, but as far as the, the plays go, I, after him, I just worked alone. And um, for me, dialogue is kind of like, it, it's not, you know, the, the characters, I know how they think, I know how they, you know, what they would say. So the plays kind of like, when I know who's talking, I, they kind of write themselves. Unfortunately, we're a little bit out of time, but uh, I wanted also to ask you, um, what are some of the prejudices that the public, general public may have toward ex-cons that you'd like to correct? Well, that's something I've been thinking about. I, I think that, um, I mean, there's going to be people, there's always going to be some people that no matter if I do well, or they'll always see me as, you know, someone who broke the law, and that's, I'll never be anything other than that. And that's fine. You know, that's, that could be, that's their opinion, and that could be fine. Um, but um, I'd like the opportunity to, to, to make good and, and do better and show that, you know, people can change and, and become, you know, the same person that did that. I'm horrified by that behavior that, I exhibited it and now I'm just a totally different person and I hope that some people would just give me that chance to do well. And certainly theater is, is a healing art in terms of uh, rehabilitating. It's healed me pretty good. And, uh, and I'm sure that it must have given a kick to the people uh, who you write about and who you create. Yeah. Uh, have any of, of your fellow inmates come to see the play? There have been guys that, uh, that I was in there with that must have heard about it somehow and have come and, you know, and only, I mean, I met all these people. Only one got a chance to see himself on stage because he's, the Jamaican character I do is one of the last characters that uh, uh, I did, I created. Well, it was based on a real guy and he got to see it in the show that I did inside and he was running around to everybody, that's me, that's me, he's doing me, he's doing me. <laughs> He's like, he, was, he, was, he was saying he was a star. Congratulations. Thank you. On a terrific uh, pro play, and uh, best of luck on a long and continued run. Thank you. And the bullpen is running at the Playroom Theater on West 46th Street. Okay, it's time for a short break. Up next, a chat with Zach Resnick, Leslie Kritzer, and Linda Hart, three of the stars of Peace of My Heart, the Burt Burns story. Welcome back. Earlier this summer, a new musical called Peace of My Heart, The Burt Burns Story debuted off Broadway. The show offers up a look at the life and work of Burt Burns, a songwriter whose name may not be...